Hello, what's up YouTube? In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can easily recover a really underexposed image in camera or you can use the same steps to recover an underexposed image in also Lightroom or any other software that you have at disposal. But for this case, I want to show you how you can do it in the camera filter and you can use the same steps for also Lightroom because these two are pretty the same and they're from Adobe. So I want to show you how I, I'm going to be covering the image to look like this and I want to show you the quick before for the image that's the before and let me just give you a brief information of what happened when I was taking this image so initially I set my ISO at 160 and I shot the image at 85 millimeter using a 73 millimeter lens rather and I shot it at f1 the shutter speed was 1 out of 100 of a second and it was pretty dark because I had two lights and the one in the front failed to fire and my rim light really fired as you can see right here. So I was going through the photos and I was like, let me just try and see how far we can recover the image and how much of the details that we can recover. So make sure that you shoot it now because most times this is going to really save you and you don't know, you may have to get that moment and maybe the moment is really memorable and really awesome and you don't have any other moment so this is going to be forcing you to work and recover information in that image so make sure to shoot in raw and when you do that you can see right now what I was able to achieve in this image so I want to show you what I did and how all the steps you can follow to achieve the best out of your photos in camera raw so I'm just going to come and I reset everything so I'm just going to come and I reset this image just here so so that we can see what we want I just you can see most of my information if at all um to see on the histogram is in the shadow area you can see this right here most of the information is in the shadow area and we have less information in the brightest areas and it's just a small or tiny peak right there so as you're looking at the image right now the very first thing you have to look at is the shadows or what you want to eliminate and recover from the image or eliminate out of the image and for this case you can see we have shadows so I'm just basically going to come to my shadows and open up the shadows up to around 60 and this gets me some tiny bit of information within the photo I hope you can see that kind of tiny information within the photo and now the next thing you want to eliminate remember it is underexposed so the next thing we want to handle in this case is the exposure. So I'm just going to come to the exposure and simply open up the exposure just like that. So I'm just going to take it up just even more up to around 3. Okay, 2.8 is fine. And now it gets back the image quite well. But as you can see, as you're doing this, it adds or it creates or adds more noise within uh, the photo. You can see the photo is really noisy and has that too much noise so the next thing you want to do is recovering the highlights so I'm just going to take the highlights down just like that so you have to take the sliders all the way down and now drastically start taking it up up to a point when you feel like it is the best point and I'm also going to do the same for my whites just like that to add or bring back contrast within the photo just like that so as I'm doing that, you can see image turns to be a little bit underexposed, but it looks quite better because when I show you the before and the after, it is quite of a progress. So I'm just going to come back to the shadows and I'm just going to open up the shadows even more and also open up the exposure even more, just like that. So I'm just going to add contrast within the darks or the blacks of the image. You can see my shadows are turning out to look a little bit gray. I'm going to come to the blacks and simply turn the blacks down slightly. Don't take it all the way down. Just do add a little bit because when you take the blacks up, it is going to make the shadows gray. So just take that down a little bit. So I think at around negative 8 is good. So anything you want to handle is the hazy look within the photo. If I told them to zoom in, you can see that we have a little bit of haziness going around the darkest area so I'm just going to come to the dehaze and I'm going to take this up just like that to get rid of that hazy look 
in the photo just at around 9 we are good to go and I'm just going to add a little bit of clarity to around 3 so let's see what we have so far just the before and after before after but still we have the noise in this photo you can see that noise there but it is really a nice progress so I'm just going to come to the vibrance and make the image pop so I just want to make the colors pop even more I'm just going to come to the vibrance and I'm going to open up the vibrance just like that to around 8 8 looks good and the image is now having that nice and rich beautiful color so what I want to do next is I'm going to come down to my I'm not going to add any saturation because I love the colors already in this photo I'm just going to come to my curves or my curves adjustment layer and instead of choosing the click the point curve option I'm just going to come to the very first option this one right here and when I click right here it is going to bring me other adjustments like highlights, lights, darks and shadows so I'm just going to come to the shadows and simply open up the shadows even more just like that up to around 17 and I'm just going to open up the darks a little bit to around 3 and that makes the image somehow better because when I toggle this on and off you can see what it has just contributed to the photo so what I'm going to do I'm going to come to my detail slider and under detail that is how we want to eliminate the noise from the photo and that noise is going to be in form of grain some people call it gain I don't know the right pronunci pronunciation rather so you can see that we have that noise within the image and we just want to eliminate that noise so in order to eliminate the noise we are just going to come to our noise reduction so let me just zoom in and I show you how this basically works so as I'm taking the noise reduction slider up you can see it gets rid of the noise or the grain within the image I hope you can see that but when you take it all the way up your image is going to lose out on the details and it is going to look like a smudge painting or like an oil painting so we don't want such a result so we're just going to take this back down and we just add a brief noise reduction up to a point when you are losing out some tiny bit of noise from the image so command minus to zoom out to look at the image from a distance and we see the adjustment that we are able to apply to the image so from a distance it looks a little bit plastic because where we had zoomed in and looking at the details so I'm just going to back this down a little bit more I'm just going to leave it around 23 23 looks good yeah 23 is fine I think let me just even go down a little bit more so 21 is good and I'm going to come to the color noise reduction and I'm going to take this up slightly to around 27 and that looks good so far so far so good and that's the before and this is where we are right now so we're just going to come to the color mixer option and we do a little bit of magic to this image so I'm just going first of all come to my luminous and luminous is more of the brightness or darkness of a specific color so under luminous I'm just going to look at the targeted areas or the target areas for example a skin tone and remember in skin tone we usually have yellows reds and oranges so I'm just going to be brightening up those colors in those areas I'm just going to come the reds and take the red up just like that around 9 and also brighten the oranges just like that you can see when I take the orange side all the up it brightens up the oranges but makes the oranges a little bit pale so I don't want to overdo that I'm just going to leave it at around 19 19 looks good and also brighten up my yellows just like that so let me show you what that has just made or contributed to the image so that's the before and after you can see the difference that we have so you can as well go ahead and do a little bit of color grading of this image by coming the saturation and simply knocking up the saturation of the oranges just like that and coming to the hues and playing around with the hue values so for this case I'm just going to take the oranges slightly towards the yellow side and under this as we're taking a hue of a given color 
to the right hand side we'll be making it look like the color just below it and when taking it towards the negative side or the left hand side we'll be making it look like the color on top of it so that is how the hue option works so i'm just going to come to the reds and also hue them towards uh, my oranges just like that and come and slightly reduce on the saturation of the reds in the photo and that is going to make the image look quite better and that's the before and this is where we are right now so what i'm going to do next i'm going to come down to the split toning and i see how we can work with this image so i feel like i should add a color within my highlights for example and we can see we have highlights so usually with split toning i tend to take the saturation all the way up then i come and move around the image just like that and as you can see the image is now tending to change a little bit and i want to add this kind of cyan feel within the photo so 182 looks good and come the saturation because the intensity is too much on the photo i'm just going to come to the saturation and uh, back it down a little bit around 11 or 12 12 is fine and after doing that i can come back to the basic adjustments and do some basic corrections like taking my highlights down a little bit more and doing the same for my whites to add contrast to the photo and also come and add the contrast within the image around five and i could as well brighten this up so my image was totally dark and it was more of a silhouette that's why my exposure is all the way to the extreme so this is it and you can as well play around with the white balance if at all you wish to and you can just warm up the image if at all you want to so i, I think that looks good and i could just take out the magenta slightly from the image so i'm just going to take down that and this looks really pretty good so let's see the overall before and after this is the image before and this is the after so you can as well follow these very same steps if at all you have an underexposed image and you can follow the same steps in camera Raw. and this is it for this story and if at all you found this helpful don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed this channel Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.